Hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of the Ingus Podcast. Today is Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. We're coming to you live from the Ingus headquarters in Washington, D.C. Uh, this uh, latest podcast is brought to you by uh, Grantham, so thank you for sponsoring Grantham. And I would request that everyone listening to the podcast at home, please download this episode. That really helps us. Uh, so uh, I'm Scott Bowsom. I'm one of the legislative directors at the Enlisted Association of the National Guard of the U.S. And I have with me Adrian Jackson, uh, one of the most recent hires from the National Guard Association. And uh, Adrian comes from uh, Senator Imhoff's office and uh, is uh, a longtime congressional staffer. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Happy to be here. Yeah. So uh, what are your first impressions of uh, life off the hill? Um, I like it. It's a little bit more autonomy, different hours, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, a little harder to get people to respond to my emails, but... Sure, sure. I remember those days. <laughs> Leaning yeah, on my friends bit. a little bit more, yeah. but... So tell us, uh, for folks listening at home and for watching, uh, what, what, are, what, what are you doing down in August? Uh, what, what made you decide to come off the hill? And you know, tell us a little bit about your portfolio. Yeah, so I'm the Army Programs Manager, so effectively the Army lobbyist for the organization. I focus on Army equipment issues, uh, Blackhawks, Apaches, Humvee modernization, mainly um, focusing on appropriation staff and working with them closely to ensure that the National Guard has all the equipment that they need to be fully ready and manned. Um, I decided to leave the Hill because I had been with Senator Inhofe's office for about four and a half years. Um, after being in that office, there's not really another office that you can move to. It's a great office and I wanted to see and what life off the hill was like and expand my resume a little bit. Oh, fantastic. No, and we're, uh, we're, we're lucky to have you. Uh, AGUS and August, Angus, we're all, we're, all, we're all fortunate to have you. Um, tell us a little bit about the challenge of leaving in the middle of a legislative year and then kind of seeing the, in this case, the National Defense Authorization Act from the outside looking in. Right, so I left directly after NDAA SASC Marka. Yep. So um, late May, came here, started early June, and um, it's very different. You're no longer on the inside. You're struggling for every little bit of information that you can get about where the bills are and trying to be as effective as possible as you can from the outside. Whereas I could just, you know, trot on down to the Armed Services Committee when my boss was chairman and um, be able to get wins for Oklahoma that way. So it's a little bit tougher, yeah. but. Um, it's a great experience so far, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to a full appropriations and sure. authorization cycle next year. Yeah, and hopefully we don't get a year-long CR. Yes. <laughs> and we can actually do that. Um, uh, last uh, last question. Um, you, you've, I understand you've been doing a little bit of traveling, even outside of, obviously, the Nagas Conference in Denver this year. Uh, what, what are some of your most recent travels? And yeah, so I was able to go to WebTAC, uh, which is an Air Force uh, conference, but I tagged along with our Air Force um, lead, Priya Goshahola, because we're looking at um, almost copying WebTAC on the Army side so that we can be more and more effective on the NAGRIA process. Um, so I'm, I was uh, able to look in on that process and whisper into my Army uh, counterparts' ears and see if we can uh, mirror that. And But I was also able to go out to uh, Watts, which, which is the Western Aviation Training Site, and fly around in the new um, Lakota upgrade, which was very fantastic. Yeah, so that's really cool. A lot of opportunities. Uh, that is that is awesome. Well, um, you know, we've been doing this podcast for over a year now, and we've had an opportunity to, to interview some of your colleagues, and yeah. then you know, obviously with you coming online, it's been it's been about six months. But we um, thank you for taking the time to uh, join us, and uh, and thank you for all you're doing. And we look forward to obviously Angus and August work together very closely, and we look forward to continuing that. So uh, I'm going to transition just a quick second. Uh, actually, General Robinson and I uh, were able to uh, uh, participate in a SecDef level roundtable at the Pentagon last week. Um, there was a number of senior leaders coming in and out throughout the afternoon. One of the questions I asked about was uh, duty status reform mm -hmm. uh, going into next year's National Defense Authorization Act. I think that'll take up a lot of oxygen in the room Definitely. in terms of uh, you know defending the benefits uh, that are associated with the various duty statuses. Obviously, they're looking to take some 32 different duty statuses down to just a handful. 
Um, and the, the response from the senior leader was uh, actually uh, he, uh, this individual um, uh, you know, called out General Robinson and said you know, that the, the department was aware of both Ingus's concerns but then also working with senior leaders uh, both within Nagus and then the TAGS and, and, and even mentioned AGA US who wasn't present in the room for this particular conversation. So positive feedback from a senior leader and uh, you know, obviously no promises, but you know, progress and they're tracking that, you know, the world closely keeping an eye on things and uh, you know, hopefully uh, this thing looks as good as it possibly can next year yeah. whenever the, the House and Senate take it up. Um, one other thing that uh, they, they, uh, the Public Affairs Office uh, asked is that, um, that uh, our, our constituencies uh, tweet out uh, hashtag uh, I served and, and hashtag know your mill. Uh, they basically are asking for a 60 to 90 second story about where you served, what made you decide to join, um, and then post it with those hashtags and encourage your uh, battle buddies to do the exact same. So I, I thought I would I put that plug in here in our in our podcast and uh, really other than that I know just wrap it up I, I can't thank you enough again for joining us uh, really look forward to continuing to work with you and uh, thanks Grantham for sponsoring our podcast and uh, one more reminder please download take care everyone.